quick animator's note. In this video, I draw small molecules in ball and stick form. This allows you to see each atom in the molecule and each bond between each atom. On the left, I'm showing you an amino acid molecule. On the right, I'm showing you a nucleotide. And then I draw macromolecules in my own custom cartoon form. On the left is a protein. Each colored shape represents a single amino acid. On the right is a cartoon chain of RNA. Each colored link represents a single nucleotide. Enjoy. Stated Clearly presents... Where does metabolism fit in the origin of life? The mystery of the origin of life has not been fully solved. When we study cells, even relatively simple cells, we are mesmerized by the beauty and complexity of their macromolecules. These are things like genes and proteins. And by the complexity of cellular metabolism. Cellular metabolism is the sum total of all controlled chemical reactions that occur inside a cell. When you eat and digest an apple, for example, bits of that apple are given to your cells through the bloodstream. Each cell's metabolism then transforms those apple bits into new parts of the cell. Transforming food into body parts is not easy. As you can see from this metabolic chart, cells perform many carefully controlled chemical reactions. Charles Darwin and those who continue his work have clearly shown that the process of biological evolution, sometimes called Darwinian evolution, is able to create highly complex structures and systems. The problem is, in order for biological evolution to work, you need to start with something that is able to make copies of itself and mutate. You need something capable of self-replication. Most people who study the origin of life are working under the idea that macromolecules, strings of amino acids, or RNA, may have been the first self-replicators, rudimentary evolving life forms in and of themselves. In our video on the RNA world hypothesis, we show that under special lab conditions, chains of RNA can act as templates for their own replication, they can mutate, and they can also fold up into three-dimensional shapes, some of which can play an active role in their own survival. Many would argue that these chains of RNA, they are alive. That said, we haven't yet shown that these are, quote, prebiotically plausible. We don't know how these evolving molecules would have gotten started on a lifeless planet. Under these macromolecule-first hypotheses, it's often assumed that metabolism isn't really something we need to worry about when we're studying the origin of life. Once the first evolving macromolecules adapted to, and in some cases, evolved to cooperate with one another, this thing that we call metabolism, it was generated automatically. Now, it might seem odd that something this complex could be generated for free, but as an analogy, if you want to draw a zebra, you don't have to draw the black stripes and then also draw the white stripes. White stripes simply come along for the ride. For the most part, a metabolic chart like this is showing us the chemical reactions caused by macromolecules as they interact with each other and small molecules taken in from the environment. This diagram just maps out how macromolecules cooperate when processing their food. Biologists already understand pretty well how cooperation evolves between different organisms. We also already know that macromolecules evolve just like organisms. This suggests that we don't really need a special explanation for metabolism. However, as mentioned earlier, we don't fully know how the first evolving macromolecules came to be. Before the Earth's natural chemistry could have produced chains of amino acids or RNA, it likely needed to generate large concentrations of single amino acids or single RNA building blocks. Experiments that simulate various early Earth environments do produce amino acids, but they produce all sorts of junk alongside them. Scientists call this the sludge problem or the tar paradox. Does this paradox exist because we are looking at the wrong types of environments with the wrong types of chemical reactions? Quite possibly. The early Earth, just like modern Earth, was a huge place with millions of unique chemical environments. How could we possibly hope to narrow things down to find the right environment, one that might produce the building blocks of life in high concentrations? This is where metabolism-first hypotheses are really starting to help. Currently, there are several wildly different metabolism-first hypotheses, but they all have one claim in common. Some aspect of modern metabolism must have existed before the first macromolecules were produced. 
the idea that metabolism may have come first. Back to our analogy, the zebra might be at least partly black with white stripes instead of white with black stripes. Some researchers are looking into what they call prebiotic autocatalytic sets. These are simple cyclical chemical reactions that some people claim might be capable of Darwinian evolution all on their own. This claim, however, has not yet been demonstrated. Other researchers, such as Greg Springsteen and Ram Krishnamurthy, they take a much milder approach. Instead of searching for simple chemical reactions that might be able to evolve on their own, they believe that the study of metabolism might help us figure out what specific types of environments could generate life. Their logic goes like this. If an ancient environment existed that was producing macromolecules, some capable of replication and evolution, natural selection would favor any macromolecule that happened to be able to turn around and enhance the environmental chemical reactions that were producing its building blocks. This behavior would increase the macromolecule's chances of replication. If this is correct, somewhere hidden among these complex charts of modern cellular metabolism, a rough outline of those early environmental chemical reactions might still exist. Metabolic fossils. Understanding these reactions would help us understand the types of environments able to cause those reactions. We would discover the nature of the cradle of life. Several possible metabolic fossils have already been found. This was done by searching for metabolic reactions that are shared by distantly related organisms. Evolutionary logic tells us that widely shared traits are probably the oldest. The oldest metabolic reactions are likely most similar to the reactions that occurred in the environment where life first began. One of these fossil candidates is the reverse Krebs cycle, also called the reverse citric acid cycle, which is commonly found in microbes. It's a variation of the cycle in our own cells, but it's extra promising because it feeds on things like carbon dioxide and hydrogen. These are simple molecules that are super common on planets all throughout the solar system and would have been very common on the early Earth. The cycle binds these simple molecules together to produce larger products. These are then captured by different metabolic pathways to build sugars, fats, amino acids, and eventually macromolecules. Most reactions in the modern cycle are guided by highly evolved macromolecules, the very things that we don't think existed on the early Earth. That said, Trent Stubbs and his colleagues have carefully studied each step in the cycle and discovered a group of similar reactions that happen without macromolecules. They work in very mild conditions. They make almost every product found in the reverse citric acid cycle, including precursor building blocks for macromolecules, and all of this is done with very little waste. These reactions completely avoid the tar paradox. The idea now is to either modify or combine this system with other metabolic fossils to find a system that generates complete macromolecules from carbon dioxide and other simple starting parts. Geologists could then figure out what types of environments could have supported this chemistry. We could simulate those environments in the lab and hopefully we could then witness the natural emergence of macromolecules that are fully capable of open-ended Darwinian evolution. We could witness the emergence of rudimentary life. It is a long shot, but it really might be doable. So in summary, what is the metabolism first hypothesis? Well, there are actually several. Some are focused on autocatalytic sets, others on metabolic fossils. All are based on the simple idea that some aspect of modern metabolism existed naturally in the environment before genes and before proteins. I am John Perry, and that is an overview of Metabolism First Hypotheses, stated clearly. This animation is part of a series on the origin and chemistry of life that was funded in part by the National Science Foundation and NASA's Center for Chemical Evolution. The animation was also funded by people like you, who support my work on patreon.com forward slash stated clearly. Thank you so much. I really, really could not do this without your help.